I'm pretty satisfied with uh, land areas on this image now, but uh, I think the water areas uh, mm, could use a little bit of help. I think they could be a little bit brighter uh, blue. And this gets a, a bit tricky uh, to do. Uh, what I will do to affect the blue is I will go into my raw data bands. Let's dig down in again. And we will look at band 8, which is near infrared. We will um, uh, import that through Geographic Imager because it's a JPEG 2000 file. It's going to take a while. I have already uh, opened it up and converted it to a, a GeoTIFF um, so we can open it up uh, much quicker from the desktop. Here we are. And so uh, near infrared really distinguishes land from water areas um, very well. But uh, you know, looking at this, uh, this raw image, there's lots of other noisy stuff on the image that we want to um, get rid of. So let's open up a, uh, a curves adjustment. And what we'll do is we'll get the bottom left-hand slider, which is the, the highlight area of this, and we'll just drag it as a linear adjustment to the right. And the more we drag it to the right, more and more of that noise starts disappearing, and we're left with only the, the water surfaces. Now, if we, we drag it too far to the right, the water areas start disappearing too, and that's uh, not really uh, a good thing. So I'm going to bring it about, like right here, we still have a little bit of um, noise up in the highlands. What these are are uh, mountain cast shadows, which have the same signature as water areas. And obviously, if we use this as a, uh, a water mass to uh, uh, put a blue tint into the water, we'll also be putting a blue tint into those high mountain areas, which is not a good thing. So what I'm going to do is open up another data set to get rid of most of those uh, mountain uh, shadows. Uh, to do that, I, um, I went and downloaded some SRTM 30 meter uh, resolution elevation data. This is for a, a, you know, a pretty large area um, around the Stikine ice field. What we're going to do is use this as a mask to get rid of the, uh, the mountain shadows. You know, in this uh, elevation data, the dark areas are lowlands, and of course the, the, the lighter, whiter areas are, are highlands. So the trick here is, you know, we have to bring this, this data, which is in a uh, completely different projection. This is uh, uh, the geographic uh, projection. And by the way, our uh, Sentinel image that we created uh, through Geographic Imager and, and, and Photoshop is also georeference, and it's in the uh, UTM uh, projection. So what I will do is I will go to the File um, drop menu down to Automate, where all the Geographic Imager goodies are uh, saved, and to uh, Geographic Imager uh, Mosaic. Dialog comes up. We want to mosaic the SRTM elevation data with our water mass data. So I'll click this arrow, and it brings it over there. So that's going to be the data that's mosaic. What's very important is click the Crop to Destination uh, Extents button. Uh, that way, uh, the mosaic will only be for the water mask layer. All the excess SRTM data outside of the water mask will just be cropped away. And then uh, another important thing to look at is this little toggle here. If we say Merge All Layers, that's what it'll do, is it'll merge all the layers together, which we don't want to do. If we select group source document layers, uh, extra sub-layers will be coming in. So I like the uh, this, this middle choice here, which preserves uh, layers, but gets rid of some of the sub-layer stuff that I, I don't want. And then just click OK and let Geographic, or Geographic Imager perform its uh, magic. So right now, it's, uh, it's transforming the SRTM from the geographic to the UTM uh, projection right on the fly. And then what it'll do is copy and paste the results into the water mask layer and crop it. And at this point, we could close the original data file. And let's look at uh, what we created here. I'll zoom out a little bit so you can see this better. 
here are the uh, the two layers. Here's the water mask, and here's the uh, the SRTM elevation data that's been uh, added as a layer on top of it uh, to exactly the same extent. Now, uh, to get rid of the mountain shadows uh, down below, what I will do is open up curves again, and I'm just going to do another linear curves adjustment, drag the, the highlight point off to the left, and what's, what it's doing is it's, it's making the highlands wider and wider at uh, progressively lower elevations. I think we've got you know, most of them done right th about there. That looks, I think, pretty good. Uh, most of the water areas on our image are near sea level, so I think this is going to work out fairly well. Then what I'm going to do is, um, with this layer selected, go and change this to screen blending mode. And if I toggle the SRTM, choked SRTM elevation layer, you can see uh, the white is replacing all those mountain shadows and we still have the, the lowland uh, uh, fjords and, and lakes that appear. So now what I'll do is I will flatten this image Maybe I'll um, I'll do another curves adjustment and maybe just on the, on the dark end of things, just darken things up just a little bit so we get more blue tone coming in. And let's just save that and go back to our uh, image that we're working on, the true color image. We'll create a new layer up at the top. Oop, not a layer group. Let me not do that. New layer there. There, I got the right button, and I'll put a layer mask on that. Let's select the layer content again, and let's put a nice blue in there. And I've, let me see what we could come up with here. I have something that's, uh, you know, 49% uh, cyan. Let's bring that up to 50% maybe, 14% uh, magenta, and I put a little bit of yellow in there to desaturate it. So it's kind of a nice light blue. Click OK. And I'll just uh, hit Option Delete or Alt Delete if you're on a PC, and that just puts blue over that entire image. We have the layer mask. We'll go to our water uh, that we just created. Do a select all, copy it, close it. We don't need it anymore. Go back to our tr true color image, and then. Option click or alt click into the layer mask, do a paste. And now I'm going to hit uh, Command I and inverse that image. So now the light colored areas will be where the blue is applied and the dark areas is they'll be masked out. So let's just click that and look what we have. We have just put that that uh, light blue into all water areas and you know it, it uh, it's flat it's not very expressive at this point but what we could do is just bring the opacity of the blue down and what's happening it's blending with the uh, the images below uh, you can see there's lots of sediments in the water from the uh, the glaciers we want to keep some of those but we want to brighten things up a little bit so i'm going to bring this up to around 40% opacity, and I think that looks, uh, you know, pretty nice. So at this point, uh, we're almost done. Now, if we uh, if we zoom in and look at the water that we um, applied, you know, here and there, you'll if I toggle the water layer, you'll see that you know at some of the lower elevations. We still have a little bit of the water blue showing up in these shadows. We didn't eliminate all of the, uh, the shadows. So what that means is we, we'll probably need to do some you know, manual touch-ups to get rid of the uh, shadows. You could pick, select your, your brush tool, for example, and then go in and uh, you know, get a nice big hard-edged brush, go over to your image, and then paint on the layer mask, paint black, and that gets rid of these shadows. So, you know, probably getting rid of the, uh, the, the mountain shadows that you don't want, you know, might take you, uh, you know, 10 minutes or so of, of, of touch-up work. It shouldn't take too long to, uh, to you know, solve that problem. 
think you get the idea. So, uh, you know, presuming that we did all of the, uh, the shadow uh, touch-ups, we're done. Uh, go into your layers uh, palette, flatten the image, go to image mode, and right now it's still a 16-bit uh, image. We'd want to change that to 8 bits per channel. This essentially halves this, the megabyte size of our image, so it's a lot easier to work with. Um, and uh, yeah, and you know, having eight bits, you don't want to do any ex any extreme manipulations to it because you just don't have enough uh, color depth to do it. But the chances are we're not going to be doing that um, henceforth um, going um, forward. So um, now we have our image. You know what next? Well, as it so turns out, I uh, I did the exact same process to the image immediately to the south of this one and so let's open that up and create a image mosaic what i did with this image i i uh, flattened it as we just did with the uh, the previous image i changed it to 8-bit um, color mode and then in geographic imager i went to um, automate quick save to format and selected uh, geotiff as the format for it let's cancel that and then immediately afterwards i went to automate again and i exported a uh, reference file uh, which would be a TFW file with the same name. I always do that because you never know when you need a, a, a TFW location file with your images. So let's, uh, let's mosaic these uh, two images together. You'll notice that the, the south image is a little bit more vibrant and dark. I did this deliberately so when we mosaic it, you can see the difference between the two images. I'll select our north image that we just created. And to do the mosaic, we'll go to automate into all the, the good uh, stuff for, of geographic imager, hit uh, mosaic, bring the south image over to be mosaic. In this case, we don't want to crop to destination extents because we want to uh, mosaic these two overlapping images. And we'll just go ahead and click OK. And look how fast that happened. Uh, uh, it, it was almost instantaneously. And we'll close that guy down, and we'll look at the layers palette, and here's the two mosaic images. If I change the blending mode to multiply, you'll see that there's a bit of overlap between these two images. That's really great, because what we could do on the, uh, the south image that we just created is create a new layer mask. I'll click the Add Layer Mask button at the bottom of the layers palette. There's the layer mask. Now what I will do is go over to the, uh, the gradient tool in the toolbar, select a linear gradient, and we'll just zoom in a little bit here, and I will hold down the shift key, click drag from the bottom up, and what it does is it blends the two images together. If we now go back to layers palette, go from multiply mode to normal, you could say that see that these images, you know, despite the, the 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 slight differences in colors, are really blending together, you know, quite nicely. Uh, you know, again, the uh, the south image is a little bit more saturated and darker than the uh, the top image. Um, at this point, you know, what we could do is just do another uh, image adjustment. We'll go to hue and saturation and where are we here da, da, da. and uh, let's uh, you know maybe lighten it up a little bit you know ever so slightly I'm just doing this by eye and uh, maybe just bring the uh, the saturation down a little bit so they're a little bit closer together and there we are uh, a nice uh, mosaic to, uh, you know sentinel images we can flatness at this point in time, merge them together. And there is one last uh, thing to do, and that is apply uh, sharpening to the image. And we'll come into, you know, we're almost at 200% right now. 
This is a little bit uh, tricky to do, and it's definitely the last thing that you want to do. So go to Filter, Sharpen, Unsharp Mask, and uh, apply sharpening. As you can see, the image just became instantly sharper and clearer to look at. I would uh, recommend not overdoing the sharpening. This is destructive, and if you apply it too much, you can't go back. Usually when I do sharpening, I usually like to start around, you know, 100%, and I bring the pixel radius, you know, down quite a bit, you know, maybe to 0.5, and uh, if I hit the preview button, you can see it applies a little bit of sharpening to it. If you need to add more at a later point, you can, uh, just don't overdo the sharpening, and click OK, and there we have it. So we just created a... Uh, true color image. We mosaiced it uh, with another true color image and sharpened it and we're ready to take this image and drape it onto a 3D scene and do other fun things with it. So that's all. Let's, um, let's end with this uh, shot here. I have a online tutorial going through all the steps we just um, covered. It's at shaderreleaf.com slash sentinel2. You can see the, uh, the URL up at the, uh, the top in the uh, yellow bar. And that's all, and thanks for joining me today. Bye-bye.